Hey everybody, it's November 9th, 2015, and uh, I saw an ad on uh, Craigslist. I actually ended up seeing the ad on uh, Saturday night, and it was posted on uh, Friday night. And the ad simply stated, um, machinist tools for sale. Um, I think it said, uh, asking $300. And then there was a comment about the Kennedy toolbox alone is worth that. Something to that effect. No pictures, but it was, according to the ad, it was right in town. It actually ended up being just over the state line in Connecticut, but close enough to town. Um, basically a 10 minute drive if that. So I ended up, um, I noticed that the contact number was a cell phone. So I called early Sunday morning. Normally I wouldn't call a, a telephone that early in the morning, but being that it was a cell phone, I figured either he's an early riser like me, or if he's not, his phone's probably not even on. So what's the harm in leaving a voicemail and trying to get in first? And, you know, I didn't know how, how much interest there was going to be in that lot without the photos. So I ended up leaving that message for him and uh, he got back to me a little bit later in the morning through text message and we went back and forth with text message. He claimed he had three other people that were interested, um, but I said, well, I'd like to come and look at it before the uh, Patriots game starts today, which is, it was a one o'clock game on Sunday. So he said, yeah, sure, all right. give me 20 minutes to dig this stuff out. So I ended up meeting him and actually Apparently he's, I think he's from Dudley, town that I live in, and uh, I guess he was just storing the stuff in a uh, cargo trailer at uh, a friend or an acquaintance's house just over the line in Connecticut. So I ended up going down there and uh, taking a look at what he had and uh, looked through the drawers and the toolboxes and ended up deciding that probably I would just make an offer on the whole lot because we agreed that there are a few items in here that are just cheap um, Chinese made items and they're not of really large value anyways so um, we went back and forth uh, you know essentially I said well what's the best you think and he said I, I said I know you get some other people that might be looking to come down and look at it but I said you know what's the best and he said well what are you thinking and I said, uh, 225 and he said, done. So, ended up, um, it's actually uh, this Kennedy top box with a little bit of damage on it, which I think he had just done recently by the looks of it. Uh, this Kennedy riser, which is actually a riser, it's the same size as the riser I bought with my big 11 draw. But what's interesting on this one is, uh, there's no lip on it to kind of keep the uh, the top box captive, and on the back there's this I don't know if this is a homemade deal or what, but there's a little corner piece here to keep the box, and I can see the ghost outline. And clearly, they've been whoever had this set up even before him had this box on top of this riser for pretty much a long time. That's actually not a bad idea. So. The idea is to get the corner piece here so it can't fall off this corner on the back. I just had to sit in like that, which gives you a little bit of a extra space to put a couple things. So it's not a bad setup to do it that way. But this is definitely the riser for the for the larger box. So um, it was a uh, top box, the riser, and a Craftsman rollaway. Um, not a huge one that, you know, this was originally stacked on top of. So, you know, I said, I really have very little interest in the Craftsman box, but I, the contents in the drawers I was interested in. So, it's really, I'm going after the contents. So, so got the three boxes uh, with contents for 225 So, again, just like I said before, don't need any more of these Kennedy boxes. If I end up turning around and selling this one, probably going to get 25 to 40 bucks for it. The riser... It's a nice riser. Might be able to get 50 bucks for that riser. You know, more if I was willing to ship it, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to ship that. Um, and then the, the roll away, I don't know what I'm going to end up doing with that. I'll probably end up blowing that thing out for, you know, 25 to 40 bucks. Uh, that's in the back of the truck still because it's heavy with all the stuff that's in it. I'm going to have to unload the drawers just to get the weight down to a, a manageable point. 
So I figured tonight we'll start going through these drawers and seeing what kind of uh, treasures I got. I think maybe I'll just use my uh, parts washer here as the bench for this uh, segment tonight. What the heck? Well, let's start at the top of the Kennedy box, top box. Got a, uh, well, it looks like that might be an ATV or motorcycle mirror that was broken off at some point and was just in there as a uh, mirror to see, uh, you know, maybe to take a peek at an indicator when it's not facing the right way. Uh, I don't know what these clips are for. I now recognize these as dividers for the small drawers. And there's a couple of Allen wrenches. Well, that's interesting. That's a oh, that's a snapped off Allen wrench. And this little thing of inserts here, Everead Tool Company CD CD dash zero two dash TL one two zero. 0.156 IC 80 degree diamond insert. It's a little diamond shaped insert and uh, carbide. It's tiny. They're really small. Okay, I see a couple items lost in the abyss underneath here. What the heck is that? No idea what that is. It's all bent up, whatever it is. Well, let's see, uh, paperwork here for, here's paperwork for a brown and sharp dial caliper, inch or metric universal. I'm pretty sure I got that. Alright, so, so, I want to take a look at this corner here a little closely on the box. Yeah, so, I don't know what the heck happened here, but that got biffed really good. But the good news is, I think with a couple of good blows, I could actually get that thing kind of square again. It's a little tight right there. Well, I think that's good enough. There's a little impingement on the back there. The The issue is that this is a double wall. So when I banged in this 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 bow on the outside here, that didn't really do anything for the inner wall. But I mean, I can't really get to the inner wall. I guess if I took all the drawers on, I might be able to get something in from behind there and pry that out. But it's just not worth all that effort. All right, let's get back to the matter at hand, the goodies. All right, so the only other item that was in the top there is the uh, are some keys. That's a genuine. That's a genuine Kennedy key. That uh, that fits the intermediate box, but it does not fit the top box. So it looks like it looks like none of these keys fit the top box. Well, that's a bummer. It lessens the value of that toolbox. I don't know how I didn't notice that. Oh well. Top drawer on the left, we've got a uh, set of Bondus metric ball tipped Allen wrenches and a very well used set of unmarked, oh these are Bondus also, standard Allen wrenches. Those are only worth a couple of bucks. 
Stainless steel made in India bevel gauge. Cheapy. A Shinwa stainless steel made in Japan bevel gauge. Well, that's a little bit better. Shinwa Rules Company Limited. That's got the drill gauge. So it's a protractor, a square, a center finder, a circle divider, and a drill point gauge all in one. Oh, isn't that wonderful? A couple little Allen wrenches, several coated pins, various sizes. Look like they might be for. Yeah, what time is it? Huh? Half an hour? What? All right, I'll come up now. Piece of aluminum with a point in it, and, and like I said, these 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 here look like they belong to some kind of indicator stands or something. Don't know. All right, what is that? It's not an edge finder. I can tell you that. It's a spring-loaded center. And another dowel pin that's not coated. That first draws a bust. Well, we'll call that five bucks. Five bucks worth of treasure. Oh, yeah, I do have the uh, little inserts here, these tiny inserts. Well, I'm still gonna call this five bucks so far. Down to $220. Alrighty. Let's see what's in the next drawdown. This is an intrepid Swiss made case. Nothing in it. This is a Mitotoyo case. With the Mitotoyo indicator in it. We've got one point on there and there's an extra point in the case. Is a uh, rod mount and a couple of a couple more mounts. Don't know how complete that is. Oh, there's actually two other contact points in there. I figured it'd probably be safe to say that that's worth ten bucks. A couple of fish tails. This is a sixty degree. It says MWP6A, 60 degree. What is that? It's homemade. Shop made, I mean. Here's one still in the plastic. It's a uh, General Tools, 60 degree. Nothing to get excited about there. Here is a Starrett Edge Finder, I believe. Yep. It's just a little stuck. We'll call that five. So I guess it's down to what, 210? that is. Bunch of pencils and pens and sharpies. And then in here this is a Circle brand. Circle C series boring bar. This must be the uh, what those tiny inserts go in. Yeah this is a tiny boring bar that uses those tiny little diamond shaped inserts. So uh, <laughs> and it there's a really, really tiny little bit to, uh, that bit must fit the screw that holds that in there. That's definitely the smallest boring bar I've ever had. One half dash seven R. I wonder what that, uh, I wonder what that's worth. Uh, so let's say we're down to 205. I'm going to do the next small draw over. Okay, here we go. Here's some stuff. There's a sign bar. Shop made. Got the uh, maker's uh, guy who made it put his name in there. So, sign bar. Highly machined and polished block. Recessed holes for cap screws. I wonder what this is. Hmm. Don't know what that's for. There's a 
part to an indicator holder maybe or something. Here's some kind of a deal here that's homemade. I don't know what this is. Hmm. <laughs> I do not have the slightest idea what this is. Does uh, anybody have any idea what that might be? Ah, a couple of one, two, three blocks. These are in really good shape. They're, uh, you know, shop made, but they're actually in better shape than any of the other ones I have right now. So I'd easily value those at five bucks for that pair. That gets us down to like 200 even. And uh, here's another pair. Caught five bucks for this pair also. Two pairs of one, two, three blocks. A couple of ball bearings, big ones. And just a couple more of these little, these little black rods here. This is one, uh, 195. Next draw down, feeler gauge that's been cut. A long feeler gauge that's been cut. And some sh little pieces of shim stock. Really thin pieces. Uh, rather than take this stuff out, let me just get the camera over here. So this drawer is uh, just a mishmash of. Uh, oh, we got some nice taps in there. Center drills. There's a carbide tipped countersink, maybe. Drill bits, a few drill bits. Oh, there's some little milling cutters in there, little ones. Again with the little stuff. Look at that little end mill. Nothing to get overly excited about, but you know, uh, I'm only going to value that at five bucks. Broken one there. 190. Next draw down. I don't know what that was, but just a piece of round stock. Um, a few lathe cutting bits, some round pieces of stock. T, T nut indicator clamp. Homemade something. Nothing. Well, I'm not gonna, even, not gonna even count that towards my total. I say it was down to 190. I always forget. Empty bag. This is a tri sided scraper. I don't have one that style. That's nice. Early one with the handle, wooden handle. Cool. Got some nice files here. Bunch of pattern files and some slightly larger ones. Another one of these tri-sided. Uh, well, that's a that's a scraper that was made out of a file file that was ground down on the end into a scraper as opposed to this which always was apparently a scraper so you know actually no, I, I I'd say we got five bucks worth of with the files and this big stone you can call that five bucks and in the front here we got a couple more stones uh, we got another one of these oh I just learned what these are I already forgot is it a zero clearance countersink? Is that what this is? I forget. This is for really soft materials like brass, I think. There's an interesting little block there. 
Hey, recognize this. This is an SPI. Well, it's either an SPI or a knockoff of an SPI. It looks exactly like the SPI. And unlike my other SPI, bad bad part about this is it doesn't have the original box and paperwork. The good part about it is is that it's not missing this one here I think is missing on the other one. Actually this looks like it's got extra. That's good. That's a nice little thing. Uh, so I think I'm down to 190. Why don't we call it uh, this little V block and here are some square carbide inserts there are three, three of those, and then three triangle shaped, and then another triangle shaped. There's three different styles of inserts in here. So with that indicator and that, we'll call that ten bucks. That's what one eighty. We're down to. Ooh, lots of end mills. Lots of end mills. All right. It's a homemade something or other. Oh, I wonder what that was. Really not any good as a boring bar holder because of the fact that there's no there's no way to clamp anything in there. I don't know what that is. All right, but what I'm looking at here, uh, got some roughing mills. Uh, looks like mostly steel oh a couple of a uh, couple of adjustable reamers that look brand new excellent shape multi flute some good size end mills in here it's a six flute another roughing one center cunning end mill the odd drill bit the odd tap a funky one some of these feel a little heavier than high speed but not heavy enough to be cobalt, um, carbide. So I wonder if they're cobalt or... That's a carbide. I mean, uh, yeah, that's a solid carbide one there. I can tell by the weight. That looks like it's barely used. Alright. I don't see anything super unusual in here, but that's a nice little assortment there. I'm going to call that, well, let's see, we've got some taps in here, and a straight reamer. I'm going to call this, uh, this drawer right here 15 bucks. So that gets me down to 165. I'm going to value the box at 20 bucks. Gets me down to 145 because I really didn't want the box. So now, let's, uh, Let's look at the next draw, the next uh, unit down. We get a mic, it's a Mitutoyo micrometer, no case. It's calibrated, calibrated by CS uh, back in 2006, maybe. Well, let's call that, uh, let's call that five bucks. So that's down to 140. Is a Mitutoyo case with. A little micrometer. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is a brown and sharp mic. It's a brown and sharp mic in a Mitsutoyo case. Yeah, I guess we we can call that one five bucks too, even though that's not as. That's actually this, this one's nicer. So I want one want the one forty, right? I don't remember. Here's another brown and sharp in a Mitsutoyo case. <laughs> This one's a little bit newer. 
satin chrome finish, Swiss made. That foam is deteriorating. We call that five bucks. I don't know, 135? Yeah, I'll say 130 because I think I forgot to count something. What do we got here? Brown and Sharp. Brown and Sharp Swiss made caliper. Dial Cal Intrametric Universal. Let's see if this is it. 599 579. That's what this is, dash four. Okay, it's four inch. No, it's not a four inch. All right, so that's the paperwork for this one. Let's see, I'm down to 130, I think. Uh, let's call this 15 bucks. 115 dollars to go. And this we have a cheap Chinese caliper. It says shock proof. Over here it says stainless steel made in China. That's a cheap one. Five bucks. So down to 110. In this big case, there's a big Chinese made in China. This one actually looks like it's in pretty good shape though. So this one is uh, 12 inch. So even though this is a cheap made in China one, I'm going to probably keep this one because I don't have one this size at all. I've got, you know, like the regular size, standard, whatever. This is a nice long one, but it's not super long like that giant Starrett that I have, which isn't a dial caliper anyways. So, ah, so even though that's a cheap made in China one because of the size and the condition, we can call that one uh, 15 bucks. Eh, 10. 10 because it's, you know, cheap Chinese. So what's that down to? Well, let's say we're down to 100 bucks. Keep losing track. Don't feel like running a paper trail tonight. Here's a uh, Starrett number S167C radius gauge set. This is somebody wrote $60 on this. Wow. I mean, these, these trade on eBay regularly, depending on what they're missing, the condition of the case, that kind of thing. This is a full set, and it also has the uh, typically the uh, missing little holder right here. So this is the first one of these I've gotten that has, because I, I picked up that Starrett set I got a good deal on, but it was missing this holder. Now... Uh, I've got this one, which is complete with everything. So, I'll keep that and get rid of the, one of the other ones. Plus, I also have that Lufkin one that does have the holder. So, anyways, uh, figure 15 on that. Gets us down to 85. Here's a little square. This is a little Starrett square. Doesn't look bent. It's a nice little square. I come in handy, you know, when you're trying to get underneath the uh, between the table and the mill, and the tall square just isn't going to fit. So I like that. I easily would drop five bucks on that. That gets down to eighty. A lowly gauge block, point nine zero zero, nine hundred thousandths gauge block. So obviously, at some point, somebody had a set. And now they're missing this one. Ah, made in China. This is a 10-piece angle block set. Chinese-made angle block set. That looks brand new. I don't know if that's ever been used. It's even still got some oil on it, which is good. That's what's uh, kept it from rusting, I think. Made in China. 30 degrees, 25 degrees, 20, 15. That must be 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. That's, that's uh, something that might come in handy. And even though it's a cheap Chinese set, I don't have an angle block set of any type. So uh, I'll keep that for now. Let's say 10 bucks on that. That's uh, 
down to 75. This is a drill index. It's a no name, pretty loaded. Pretty loaded. I wonder if these actually are letter drills on this side. Well, anyway, some of these drills, I can see they've spun in the chuck, so they're obviously well used. Some of them look like they're brand new. It's a mishmash of, of, of different sizes. There's a bunch of loose ones in the bottom. There's a little small one there. belongs up here somewhere. Now let's call that five bucks. So what's that get us down to? Well, that's a quality clasp on this thing. You can tell this is quality made. <laughs> All right, so I was down to uh, 70 bucks, and uh, well, I'm gonna, that drill index would just call it five bucks. So down to 65. Hmm. It's only had a price of two dollars on it. It's a general drill and wire gauge index. I've come across these, but I've never actually gotten one. This is a number 15, looks like. I've never actually gotten one <laughs> that was still in the original envelope. And there's two of them in here. This is a drill and wire gauge, and this is a fractional drill size. So I'll have to go through my. Uh, my gauges that I have and see see if I can use those. To make the math easy, why don't we say two dollars and fifty cents a piece, make it five bucks. So that gets us down to sixty. Just a round piece of stock. This is a made in China horse brand. Horse H O R S E brand. One thirty seconds of an inch to three eighths inch chuck. Uh, so that's a cheapy chuck. Let's call that. Uh, actually, though, it's in good condition. I don't know. What am I down to? Sixty bucks. Let's call this five bucks. Fifty-five dollars. We're down to. What's this big chuck? This is also. This is a 3 to 16 millimeter JT6 chuck. This is also a cheapo. Can't find where it says it, but I'm sure somewhere on here it says it's made in China. Boy, that's uh that's chewed up from spinning. Actually though, you know, the it's nice and free and the jaws look good. Actually not in bad shape. Uh, let's see, was I at 55 or 60? Something like that. Why don't we say this gets us down to 50 bucks? If we're on a surface plate. This is shop made by the looks of it. Nicely executed though. Nice job somebody did on making this. I'm not going to value that at anything. A couple of chuck keys. Maybe they're for these chucks. Uh, it looks like another gauge block. This is a point one two six maybe. There's another one, I don't know, 0.145, maybe. Well, let's, this is a gauge block set. Let's see if this is missing any. This is a Dual gauges, so that those are a different brand. This looks like it might be, no, oh, no, that one missing here. This looks like it might be a complete set, except for one right here. Dual. Continental Machines Incorporated, Minneapolis. This case contains 37 precision gauge blocks calibrated at 68 degrees Fahrenheit and arranged in numerical order. Accuracy, 8 mil, I think it says. Grade B, a serial number, date, looks like uh, 74, 94, can't tell. That's a little gauge block set. I don't have a gauge block set, so that'll be nice. Um, well, it looks like if that's .105 is missing, this one's got a name on it like Weber or Welder or something on it. What was this one? Yeah, unfortunately, this is not the .105. Are these marked? Hey, these are pretty clearly marked, so this is... Uh, 
judging from the style of the marking on this, I would say that this is not from this set. These are a lot easier to read. So I, I have no idea what to value that at. But I think, uh, oh hell, let's just say uh, 15 bucks. That gets us down to $35. Drill bit. Oh, there's the rod for that, uh, that uh, indicator stand for surface plate. There's a nice long drill bit there. Tool and Die Company. Let's see. This is uh, from 2002. This is pay stub. This is actually the guy I bought this stuff from, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to destroy this and not show any of the information on the camera. But just out of curiosity, worked 40 hours and 1.42 hours of overtime. Well, it doesn't have his hourly rate on here, but it shows that for 40 hours. His gross pay was five hundred uh, five hundred and seventy dollars. So you could do the math there, and I could do the math, and I'll put that up on the screen just in case anybody was curious what uh, what a machinist in two thousand and two was making at that company. If I had noticed those in there when I was buying the stuff, I would have given them right to him. Then again, if I had noticed, I would have asked him if he had the key for the top box. Metric conversion planner. MSC conversion chart, tap drill chart, oblique triangles. This is a little, uh, this is a little uh, cheat sheet for your uh, trigonomic functions. It's got all the tables in it. What was I down to? Forty bucks, I think. This is a made in Taiwan. Can't quite make out what the logo is on this, but it's a uh, point one. No, it's a zero to one half. 0 to 13 millimeter, 33 JT keyless chuck. Uh, looks like it's in really good condition. Motion's nice and good. Shaft on this one isn't uh, all chewed up. Got a little surface rust there. That's that's an Albrecht knockoff if I've ever seen one. Right down to the shape of the jaws. How am I uh, so sure of that? Well, because. He has a genuine Albrecht in here with it. This actually had this tiny drill bit in it when I was checking it out. So this is the uh, this is the genuine Albrecht chuck. This is a uh, one thirty seconds to half inch Albrecht Germany one thirteen. So that's a really nice chuck there. But, it's funny, looking at them side by side, wow, I mean, rip off, big time. The size of this collar on the Chinese one, on the Taiwan one, is, is a little bit different. But the rest of it, very similar. Actually, this is a little thicker back here, too. But, uh, yeah, you could see that they were clearly ripping this Albrecht off. So, um... Good Albrecht Chuck and the cheap Chinese one. Just, even if you only valued this at ten bucks, that that means this has to be thirty bucks to make us at zero. And we might, and I would say that's even worth more than thirty dollars. Maybe, man, eh, you know what the hell? Let's let's say that's uh, let's say that is thirty, just so we can get it to zero. So now, I basically can go under the. Um, I can operate under the assumption that anything that the uh, rollaway toolbox, the Craftsman rollaway toolbox, and anything in that toolbox is basically freebies. And I honestly, even though I just picked this stuff up the other day, I honestly don't even remember what's in there. Let's go take a look. I want to say that I think the indicator that belongs in this case might be in there. And I don't remember if I deducted the uh, value of the actual Kennedy riser out of that that whole uh, number. If I already did, well then great. We're back at you know anything in the boxes is, is uh, freebies. And if I didn't, well then that means the riser is a freebie. See how I use that convoluted logic to justify buying these tools?